Right, when he wasn't going after people in his own party, Donald Trump yesterday continued to blame Hillary Clinton for the rise of the Islamic State. ISIS was formed during her tenure. ISIS is now worse than ever. You see what happened yesterday. You see what's going on generally. ISIS is looking strong. ISIS is signing up people over the internet. They know how to use the internet better than we do, and we do nothing about anything. They're taking our youth. They're, you know why they're taking our youth? Because they look like they're winning. She's not going to get tougher. It started under her. It was a little group of people. It could have been wiped out quickly and effectively then. Now it's a very large group of people, and it's only getting bigger. And if she gets in, it'll be massive, and we won't even have a country anymore. We're going to be afraid to walk outside. All right. Now we're going to hold Mr. Trump over And, and Bill, remember one other thing. They're letting tens of thousands of people come in from Syria, and nobody knows who these people All are. All right. Well, we went and through that And a lot already. of those people are ISIS. Okay. So, Mike, that actually actually plays in the fall campaign, where you're actually a Republican uh, criticizing a Democratic nominee, presumptive nominee. It'll it'll play for a while. Won't won't, won't play in the big picture. You cannot run on fear and win. I, I thought that's what we did in America. No, we, he can't do it. He can't do it. You, you don't you don't think uh, you, you don't no. think no that, that I mean and, and again I, I, I fall back on what is going to happen to his language and his behavior once he begins getting intelligence briefings because we, he is so far off the rails on this. It's great. There's two elements to this campaign. There's the head and there's the heart. If you're thinking about the presidency of the United States you've got to be thinking well oh, okay Hillary Clinton makes some sense. If you're voting with your heart on trade or ISIS, you're right now inclined I mean, to vote wait, for Donald wait, did, you, did you say this in 2004, that people don't vote for their fears? Because people voted their fears in 2004. I don't criticize people for voting their fears. Sometimes I vote my fears, too. In 2004, I voted my fears. I did, voted for George W. Bush because I didn't think John Kerry was going to be strong enough. Why didn't you think he was going to be strong enough? John Kerry? Yeah. It's just a gut feeling. Because they portrayed him on the, on the windsurfing no, and everything like no, that? No, no, because, because I thought he would be wringing his hands in, Did, in critical times, and he would he he wouldn't be able to make so, strong decisions. And again, I don't want to replay what about 2004. That, it's not what about, about that I'm line especially proud of, what, but, what about what about the O'Reilly line that he just popped out last night? There are thousands coming in yeah. from Syria, and they're ISIS. There are not thousands coming in. Thousands from Syria. coming in where? Into the he United States. On, uh, Okay. We're not going to have a country anymore. Well, that's just not true, is it? No. Yeah, we'll pull and that. The element that Bush had besides, besides, you know, fear mongering a little bit was that he was stable. I mean, they, they went after Kerry for being unstable. That was stable. Right, and so to speak. and that's I think, but the Clinton people yeah. view as Trump's biggest vulnerability. I think my bigger point is on on issues like this, will people vote their gut? They vote. You know, who's going to protect my kids? Who's going to protect? Now, listen, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. I'm, I'm very concerned about Donald Trump. I've, I've expressed those concerns repeatedly for, for some time. But there are people out there hearing Donald Trump talking about ISIS who are going to say, hey, he's going to, you know, he's going to protect us more than, say, Hillary Clinton. You had yesterday the CIA director, Brennan, came out publicly in a pretty amazing interview and said what happened in Istanbul absolutely could happen in the United States of America, and there are probably people training and trying to make it happen right now. CIA director says it out loud. So when Donald Trump, following that statement, goes on TV and says what he said, that's going to resonate with some people. If the CIA director said it's coming here, you have to look at two candidates and you say, which one of these two is going to be stronger for me? Some people will say it's Hillary Clinton because of her experience at state. Others might think it's Donald Trump on a pure gut level. I, I, I brought up uh, Meek in 2004 because I remember you telling me a long time ago how it would make you angry uh, in 2004 when people said they were going to vote for George W. Bush because he was going to, quote, make them make safer. Safe, yeah. and, and again, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I do think, though, people vote their gut a lot of times and they vote their fears. Here is, uh, as you were mentioning, uh, Brennan talking about the next potential attack. It would be surprising to me that uh, ISIL is not trying to hit us uh, both in the region as well as in our homeland. If anybody here believes that you know the the U.S. homeland is is hermetically sealed, and that the the Daesh or ISIL uh, would not consider that, I think uh, I would I would you know guard against that. Some tough talk, Mike.
very tough talk, but very realistic talk because, I mean, you can't erect a barricade around the United States of America. There are freelancers in this country, probably affiliated with ISIS, we don't know, who could, con who could carry out what was carried out in, in Istanbul. There's no doubt about that. But Donald Trump goes around saying we're doing virtually nothing to battle ISIS, to conduct uh, uh, operations against ISIS. Well, that's just not true. Well, yeah, At some point, he's going to be asked, Donald, what would you do? I said, I'm not comparing Donald Trump to JFK. I just happen to be reviewing a, a book right now uh, about the Kennedys. And you, you, you look, Mark Alperin, at the 1960 race. John Kennedy just made up a missile gap with the Soviets. He just lied. They invented it out of thin air. And every historian will tell you, they just lied about a missile gap that didn't exist. And it worked. Trump will win if people want change. And President Obama's approval rating overall is up, but his, his numbers on handling terror, dealing with ISIS, are not as high as his overall numbers. He's doing better on domestic stuff now. So people may be willing to take a chance. I think, I think in the end, he's going to have to be a candidate for change with a little bit more reassurance than he's given people. So, yeah, I, I, but, but again, the question, do, do people vote their fears? And that's yeah. the question about the missile gap think, versus, you know, in 2004. They vote, they, vote, they vote anxiety and they vote that the status quo isn't good, that the way we're trying to protect ourselves now isn't, isn't the right way to do it. And Hillary Clinton will be largely campaigning on continuity. I guess that, that what's interesting, Mika, is you've got the anxiety of ISIS and then you've got the anxiety that Donald Trump creates around himself. Exactly. When he shows the extraordinary lack of discipline that he showed yesterday mm -hmm. instead of staying focused talking about workers talking about the working class talking about struggling Americans talking about Hillary Clinton and her failures he goes back and he starts attacking Jim Bush and John Kasich again like I, 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 it's it's mind-boggling so I mean like if you were advising Donald Trump I think the key thing I don't know if you can hear this but you know, people do vote their fears, they do, but they can't fear you. They can't fear that you're unhinged. They can't fear Correct. that you're inconsistent. They can't fear that you say one thing and then you mean another. They can't fear that you'll just blurt out a lie, a blatant they lie. They can't fear that in the middle of, be... of, a, of, a, of a conference over, let's say, in Geneva, where you're negotiating something that's extraordinarily important to the United States, that you read an article and then you go off on Merkel or you go off on, on, on somebody else the next day yeah. at a press conference. Does he have any discipline at all? Can he do the same thing two days in a row? Right now, the answer seems to be a resounding no. All right, still ahead on Morning Joe. So much to talk about. Donald Trump says he knows how Bernie Sanders really feels about Hillary Clinton. We'll play that for you coming up. Plus, it's not every day that you see the Attorney General of the United States meeting privately with the husband of someone under an FBI investigation. Mark Halperin, is, that, is that, also is running that, for president. Mark, is that is that good or bad? Not ideal. That Loretta Lynch We're is gonna meeting take a with look Bill Clinton while the whole the world is wondering whether Hillary is going to be indicted or not. Not ideal. They meet privately? It was a chance meeting. A chance meeting. Did yeah. did either one of them have anybody around them saying, hey, you know what? This doesn't you look You guys good. probably should not meet privately. Well, unless they need to meet Fair privately. Enough. Sorry, that's just what it is. Unless they need they, to, and, and Bill needs to get assurances that she's not going to be indicted? I can't. How do they not talk about that's that? That's mind boggling. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.